What do you get when you combine a space game with democracy? The answer is a giant planet-eating alien becoming a galactic war criminal and more enemy fleets that can physically fit on the screen. Because today, in Stellaris, we'll be using a few of the new civics to spread the greatness of democracy by force. Adding in telepathy and a special friend that'll help us out, what could possibly go wrong? So the first thing we have is our empire, the democratic democracy of democratic, I assume democracy. An egalitarian, xenophobic, and militarist faction who happen to be cave dwellers. We also have crusader spirit and sovereign guardianship, which I will explain as we go on because they are new to the game. So getting into the game, we have our beautiful leader, Democracy Daniel, someone who definitely looks very trustworthy. Our people uh, are called democracy and our starting system is of course called liberty land so the first thing we're gonna do is pick all of our research uh, and of course i'm going to choose armor and blue lasers because as the proud democracy fanatics we are uh, our entire strategy revolves around invading all of our neighbors for now though we just want to explore all of these systems around survey them so that we're able to build star bases and expand our faction is a democracy which means every 10 years we do have an election and our civics are very special Special. So as sovereign guardians, we essentially hate expanding our borders. We like having as few systems as possible and as few planets as possible. At the same time, we have no problem with stacking a ton of pops on each of our planets, and we get access to a special guardian called Fanatic Guardians, which are essentially defensive armies on steroids. And of course, we had our first contact protocols. We we literally can't even be nice to people. Enables hostile first contact options such as abduction and dissection. Okay, and of course. As one of our first events, we get the Fellowship event chain, which is essentially going to immediately spawn uh, enemy fleets in our capital. Luckily, our starbase should be able to handle this almost completely. I mean, it's, yeah, not, not even really very close. We also have enough unity now for our tradition. And we are going to go with Enmity, which essentially gives us bonuses depending on how many rivals we have. Spoiler, we're going to rival everyone. Okay, great. The first democracy colony. Ah, perfect. Nice old voting village. Okay, nice. We've encountered our very first uh, alien, and worrying. But we can assign someone to. Oh, is that Jeff Bezos? I'm sure assigning him to decipher this language could do nothing but good things. Wait, Jeff? Je slur? Anyway, as soon as we get them translated, we are probably going to take our first course of action and rival them. Okay, great. So we destroyed the first cultist fleet, which isn't really all that big a deal. We do need to go and find a couple more in order to complete this event chain. I'll be honest, I don't actually remember remember what this does, but as long as it results in the inevitable repression of our people, I think I can live with that. Another thing that's really special about our race of people is that they are all subterranean. As you can see here, our cities are underground. The important part about this is we can pretty much colonize anywhere. So although this happens to be a tropical world, we have a minimum habitability of 50%, which means that any planet anywhere is guaranteed at least 50% habitability. One of the other bonuses of being underground is that our mining districts are are uncapped, which means that we can mine pretty much any planet to exhaustion. So voting village here is 13 slots and we can put 13 mining districts on it, meaning our mineral income is going to be insane by the end of the game. All right, so we found our very first set of Xenos, the artisan troop over here, which is actually really, really great because I believe even though we're xenophobic, we are able to still contact them and commission art pieces, become patrons, stuff like that. We do want to commission a couple of art pieces which should allow us to come on over to our planets and then use a decision to add them. Amenities plus 15% and more immigration. Why anybody would immigrate to the Empire where we expressly hate everybody not from the Empire, I don't know. But hey, their loss of rights. Oh wait, I, oh my god, I totally forgot. We, we have elections. We don't actually have enough unity to, you know, commit voter fraud right now, but hopefully we will later. And, and look at that, Democracy Daniel is back. Another important thing you might have seen is that because we're Crusaders, we actually have have a unique trait on all commanders. It essentially makes it so every time we destroy an enemy fleet, we gain more unity. And the same goes for enemy armies. And we even just found the curator, which is amazing. The curator lets us spend money to hopefully increase our research rate. They, um... I don't know why they chose this system to live in. And we're also getting our first faction, the Democratic Rights Network. Excellent. Equality and justice for all denizens. I mean, you know, it's equality. Wait, a cause to dance. Strange occurrences have been reported. Apparently, many individuals have taken to dancing on the streets for hours and even days on end. 
refusing to stop until they're physically restrained. What? We we just established this colony. What are you guys doing here? Okay, apparently we've now dubbed it the dancing plague. Risk dancing themselves to death? I mean, I'm not above my citizens dying, but you know, it's I don't have that many workers. So also in our unity tree, in this enmity tree, we get a bunch of really, really strong abilities. The first one is basically if we're weaker than someone at anything, we immediately get bonuses for it. The second one is that we deal 15% more damage to rivals, which is actually really insane. And the last time is that every time we humiliate our enemies in a war, we immediately get a whole bunch of research points and unity output, meaning we want to go to war against our enemies as much as possible. Oh, okay. And we found the Sages of the Shroud. Besides looking like a Star Wars character, they're basically like voodoo masters of the super ethereal realm, yada, yada, yada. We don't care. Magic is great, but guns are better. Another thing we get as the Sovereign Guardians is a First Citadel role. So if we go into our government, I just expanded the council. The First Citadel essentially gives us a ton of defensive bonuses per level. When we keep stacking all of these on top of each other, it gets insane how well we can defend ourselves. Jesus, it says a lot about our commanders when we literally just have army collateral damage plus 33% and all of our commanders have it. Also, why is everyone bald? This really reminds me of like some Horatio stuff. The other thing we get sort of unique to our xenophobia and militarism is a council agenda. Second strike. Remove all truces with rivals. Normally the truce is what prevents you from just continuously attacking someone over and over and over again. We don't have such a Limit. People like to call it diplomacy, whatever that is. All right, with our last enmity tradition, it's gonna complete out this tree, give us a whole bunch of bonuses, and more importantly, give us an ascension perk. So there's a lot of things that we could take here. Technological ascendancy is always really good. Uh, a whole bunch of other ones. But the main one we want is nihilistic acquisition. Now, the reason we want this is because it unlocks the raiding stance. So if I go to one of my fleets, we can see that we have orbital bombardment, indiscriminate selective, and raiding. Light damage to armies, light damage to planet, will abduct pops when possible. You might be able to see where this is going. Because we are democratic crusaders, essentially, we can only use liberation wars. So if I go into my government edicts, you can see only liberation wars. I can't even use defensive wars, and I can't even use unrestricted wars. But what that does mean is that I am completely allowed to declare a liberation war, and instead of trying to invade our rivals' planets, I just kidnap all their people. Oh my god, I just realized my, my head scientist died? Well, that's that's not good. I mean, luckily I could just come in here and, you know, replace them immediately. But still, it's it's kind of inconvenient. For our second tradition, you probably expected it. The only right thing to take is supremacy. With really the only goal of it just to make all of our ships even stronger. Right, so we just had another election and thank God a democracy Daniel stays in power. That does not look like a man who has political opponents, or at least alive ones. Oh my God, okay, we just found the Holy Guardians. Of course, no matter what we do, they, they literally don't care because they are extremely scary. <laughs> Their age is over. The time of the democracy has come. Well, as zealous as our people are at conquering the Holy Guardians, they probably have something like a couple million fleet power. On the bright side, we are going to wipe out the cultists and find three Arctic worlds back to back to back. Oh, okay. We also just discovered the cultist flagship over here as well as, oh my God, our very first friends. Oh, they're pacifists. Oh, ho, ho. well, now that I know you're pacifists, prepare to die. Even better, they are directly on our borders up here. So of course, the first thing I'm going to do is just declare a rivalry. I don't even know who these people are, but you know, why not? Good old Jeff Bezos is manning the spine network. Okay, great. We've ended the fellowship chain by boarding and stealing the cultist flagship. So now we can just throw that into one beautiful army and make our way up here to, you know, uh, invade our neighbors. Well, actually not invade. We're not going to take any systems. We're we're nice people. Those juicy pops, on the other hand, mm. Also, what's pretty amazing is that our rival over here actually has superior technology, which means that all of our science production should immediately be kicking into overdrive because of our ascension or tradition over here that just gives us bonuses if people are better than us. All right, well, now we have multiple stacks of armies, uh, a whopping about 3,000, actually almost about 4,000 fleet power, which means now we are just going to dive face first into our enemy, impose ideology. Ho, ho, ho. So declaring war, they, uh, you know, these pacifists, they, they don't say a chance. And we get to just throw a pretty sizable amount of fleet power right into the face of this station over here. And great. I genuinely don't 
even know if they have much of a fleet. They just built star stations everywhere, but because of our bonuses, we do a ton of damage to them. What I can do is come over here to this beautiful planet and, oh wow, it's it's nice that you have people here. Not for long. Oh wait, the orbital bombardment has sparked our council to discuss how we should respond in the hypothetical scenario of a surrender. I think you mean keep bombing. Okay, we're actually gonna do, oh, okay, eh, never mind. I thought that battle was gonna be somewhat close and the enemy is just running all their fleet straight into us. I'm also, of course, gonna go ahead and grab our display of power to just get more militaristic ethics attraction and lower our war exhaustion. We also have another election. I am gonna do a little voter fraud here, actually. I, I want this one to be supported. And now I'm also just gonna quickly try and bum rush them over here. Their fleets are still reinforcing and we can basically invade most of their planets with ease. So this fleet's gone over here. It has seven pops. Mm -mm -mm, don't mind if I do. So I can just come over here and continuously. Okay, I mean, guys, this is this is not a good idea. There's no way you win this fight. Now we can just come over here and bomb these guys in order to kidnap a whole ton of their pops. Because we are a sovereign guardianship, we get minus 50% empire size from pops, which means we're incentivized to just have as many people as possible. Man, they just keep throwing their head into this system over here. I mean, it looks like they're gonna retreat now. I think they're starting to get smart that continuously smashing their face into the... Okay, they're they're gonna do it again. I, they, they immediately retreated. They, they didn't even shoot. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, we are starting to really rake in the people. So we just got two of their pops, which means I think if I go into our capital, there they are. So now we can start putting these losers to work and pretty much everywhere. Oh my God, we have, we have taken almost everyone from this planet. All right, there's only two people left, which means we, we don't really have a reason to be here anymore, but we do have every reason to invade their capital. That is a juicy 43 pops. Oh my God, get over here. It does take a pretty long while in order to actually abduct pop. Okay, maybe maybe not as long as I thought it did. Guys, you, you need to slow down. My empire is rapidly degenerating into unemployment, the worst crime of all. Also, these are lithoid pops. They're, they're eating all my minerals. One of the big down sides of orbital bombing though is that it does rapidly increase our war exhaustion. So as you can see we've hit 100%. Oh wait no I, I'm completely wrong. We're only at 60. We could keep bombing them into the stone age. Well I was readying our galactic council to just cancel our truce with them and invade them again which I, I'm probably still gonna do. All right we are actually starting to face mass unemployment because I can't physically employ all of these dang people. The lithoids are just eating all of my minerals so I can't build any more buildings. Okay, now we now we have unemployment. I, guys, they don't even have rights. Why are we giving them increased benefits? Oh my god, who are you? Some random renowned paragon uh, who is, I mean, rocking some insanely powerful bonuses. I, and he wants to join us because we're declaring war on everyone. Hey, have at it. Welcome aboard, buddy. And you know what? I'm even just gonna throw him in to become our new minister of defense. He is way taller than everybody else. Holy crap. All right, we're having so many unemployment problems. I think I figured out a new solution. Instead of having indentured servitude, let's just make them livestock. Because they're lithoids, it does mean that, uh, there we go, the unemployment crisis is completely solved. And because they are basically made of minerals, the only thing they do is produce minerals. So hey, free money. Oh my god. I just realized Democracy Daniel's gonna get kicked out of office by Baron Victor Gyra, Baron dude. I mean, honestly, I I'm completely okay with that. Nothing says democracy like our leader being some disgraced noble militarist fanatic. Okay, there he is. The new leader of our entire faction um, of xenophobes is not even of our race. How progressive. Okay, well, this seems like a good time to probably stop our war currently. We could just hit him with the settle status quo. So the reason that we don't want to actually win the war is because if we do, we can't declare war on them again. So by setting status quo, it basically means they still have their own own ideology, which means that actually if I go into my Galactic Council, I can immediately launch Second Strike and then come over here and basically declare war on them again. Well, as much as it pains me to say this, good old democracy Daniel uh, is getting booted out of the government. For whatever reason, his salary was like 10% of our monthly unity. Kind of high. Oh, that's fitting. One of our counselors got intolerance as a trait, which is honestly surprising considering like how much more intolerant can we get? And now that 
we finish Supremacy, uh, we can get a second one of our Ascension perks. And Technological Ascendancy is kind of just the go-to. It's just increased research speed and more rare technologies. There's not really any downside. One of the flaws I am realizing is that it seems like we've gotten kind of unlucky. Uh, right when I want to spawn next to lots of people, no one. The Holy Guardians over here, we can't really fight. We they can't declare war on these guys quite yet and, you know, steal all their people. So hopefully we can find someone a little bit further to the south. We'll just roll over them because our fleets are way too massive. Oh my god, this is perfect. One of our insights from observing a primitive society over here in the Stone Age is satisfying insults. Insult efficiency, gain a benefit for insulting another empire every five years. I would love to see what this actually does. One of my leaders just vanished. That is kind of bad, but I mean, let's be honest, in this empire, not terribly unexpected. Oh my god, looking at this insult, what makes a being turned pacifist? Lust for gold, power, or are you just born with a heart full of pacifism? It's enough to make you sick. Ooh, okay, we got the Hidden Worlds event, which allows us to talk with the Oracle over here. Essentially, this is a renowned paragon. If we ask them what happened to the inhabitants of the station, then basically the Oracle just killed everyone. Your society is riddled with crime and deviation. I can make the pain go away. Well, there's really only one rational thing to do here. Install them as our new Minister of State. Also, they're, uh, 5,973 years old. Jesus Christ. Also, I'm sure our governor wouldn't mind taking a break so that they could be in charge. I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine as the, uh, the leader of all of our cities. Oh, that's kind of scary. We've just discovered a massive egg that we thought was a mountain. I mean, how bad could it be if we open it? I've also been sending my ships out here. My, really, my military fleets. Not even science, because I don't care about surveying any of this. I'm just trying to find as many people as I can. And there we go, another set of aliens. So as we just keep roaming our military, I mean, you know, nobody's gonna be scared that flying right through their capital is about 2,000 fleet power. I've also got all my diplomats who are literally the same person. Oh no, that's not racist. Okay, in my plight to try and discover different nations, we accidentally just invaded these random people. I'm pretty sure this is an empire. I just genuinely don't know who they are. I don't even know whose ships these are, or whose capital. We can't even speak their language. We just rolled up, started blasting their space stations, and it's not even doing us anything. I've never been so proud. Wait, I just realized if I'm able to fight these, this random empire, despite the fact that I've not encountered them in the slightest, can I bomb their planet? Oh my God, I can. I haven't even met these people and I'm just bombing their planet anyway. <laughs> oh good, the Heath Metis. They are wise to be cautious. Nah, let's just hack into their data banks. Oh wait, they're robots. Oh no. As long as they're not determined exterminators. That would, that's kind of the only bad part. It, uh, Oh, that's not good. Well, the downside about fighting determined exterminators uh, is that, oh my God, I think they killed our fleet. Oh wait, no, it just established the border and our fleet immediately peaced out. Although in case it wasn't obvious, they have really crazy combat bonuses. Uh, they're going to declare war on us pretty soon, most likely. Luckily, we are pretty far from them, so we do have a bit of buffer. But the problem is we can't actually kidnap any of their population because their population will try to kill us. Oh, the galactic community is now getting formed. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's <laughs> Good. Literally every single person closed their borders with us immediately. Well, time for me to go through all of these random people. Uh, oh, we, we don't like that. You know what? We'll just, we're going to try and establish somewhat friendly relations on all these people, at least for right now, and pop them some purple rain. Don't know if that's a euphemism. But now we know all these various empires in the galaxy. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're still not really very close to them. Something about the Synthoian erasers is a little off-putting. So it looks like the galactic the community is going to start voting on resolutions, and honestly, all of them are totally worthless. The Radiant Shield is kind of nice, because at least it does give us a bit more naval capacity and weight from fleet power, the one thing we're probably going to dominate everyone else in. But again, I'm slightly more concerned that our neighbors want to totally annihilate us. Flesh is weak, metal is eternal. In any other context, I would agree. Ooh, I can just go ahead and insult these guys. We gained a satisfied insult for five years. Uh, as well as 50 influence. Okay, sure. What exactly does that do? Uh, it just gives us monthly unity, stability, and happiness. That was a zinger. <laughs>
Uh, it was the insult that showed them, not the, uh, you know, invasion of their entire empire and kidnapping of, like, 37 pops. All right, I've also been trying to investigate all of these Bau colonies. Uh, there is quite a few of them. I don't actually remember what the benefit is when we complete them. Uh, there, there's some kind of artifact you usually get that is really, really strong, but I just don't remember. So maybe it'll just blow up my entire empire. I don't know. Okay, well, one of our leaders died at the age of 99. I don't actually know what any of these events do, but uh, monthly unity, oh, that's actually really good. I guess because of our egalitarian roots, we want our people to die. Works for me. Wait, our linguists have finished developing a new satisfying insult. We just need to find a target for it. Well, I mean, the people right above me, let's just insult them again. The fact that it took us five years to develop a single insult is uh, extremely impressive. I mean, the dedication we have to the cause is something else. Oh, uh, excuse me, what is happening? I'm looking at the people over here, and somehow they are at war with the erasers on the other side of the map, which I have no idea how that's the case, given they are on the other side of the map. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Uh, the coalition up here just declared war on these guys right here, meaning I can immediately jump in and declare war myself. But instead of doing that, I'd actually prefer to declare war on the people up here. The reason being, we want different types of pops in our empire because then I can actually legislate out how many people are livestock and how many people are working the mines. Well, I'm not really all that surprised that this fight is seeming extremely one-sided. They've already conquered most of the stuff over of uh, the commonwealth above us. I just need to wait until they're roughly adjacent and then I can declare war. All right, so the people above us just made peace, which is actually kind of unfortunate because I did want to go after the, oh, well, the overwhelming fleet power is not very uh, reassuring. Oh, we got bubbles. The amoeba over here, uh, I believe it will join us almost immediately. Yes, it is a 700 fleet power amoeba. We can't actually assign it a leader, but I, you know, you can see it's all, it's all cute over there phasing into my science ship. You know, I wonder, can I set the orbital bombardment? Yes, I can set the orbital bombardment stance to raiding. I'm not really sure how this thing raids, but I I don't think I want to know. So we just got our third ascension perk. And despite what I said earlier, uh, what we're actually going to do is go for mind over matter. Synthetic evolution and flesh is weak is definitely my favorites. However, mind over matter is much more into the psionics tree, which should enhance pretty much all of our people. It will give us access to the psionics tradition as soon as I get enough points. And so that's where we'll see the, uh, the pretty weird things we can do with psionics. Right, well, it's that time of the decade again where we just declare war on our neighbor for really no good reason. Oh, actually, I could do one better. I could just straight up vassalize them, which honestly, I think is a better decision than anything else we could do. Their fleet power is practically nothing compared to us, so that's pretty good. And invading most of their planets should not be all that hard. What we really need to do is just steal a whole bunch of pops. The thing is, the lithoids are not that useful anymore because they mostly just are livestock and generate minerals, and we have plenty of those. Will that stop me from building slave armies of lithoids? Of course not. I also just realized that I got the research for a, I believe it is a zoo. Yes, an alien zoo where we could have the lithoids work as, as pets. My options of a ground commander are between Carb over here, who's literally a pacifist. I don't know why he's a general, but I'm gonna go with this guy who is a butcher and a xenophobe. Okay, well, you know what I wasn't really accounting for? Uh, if I go to their capital over here, if I check their armies, 1,600 garrison power. Even their random fringe colonies over here have some stupid amounts of like, yeah, 770 garrison. I've been focusing on the war over here. We are steamrolling. And then I decided to go south a little. And uh, what is that? Somehow the determined exterminators are losing to people across the entire galaxy. And I don't know whether to be scared of the exterminators or this random confederacy. Oh, wow. I love seeing our empire name in different events. Careless pawing. Uh, it's parts are equal to the sum of the democratic democracy of democratic democracy. <laughs> Jesus, it has been years of just constantly bombing their capital. It's got 43 people. Oh, wait, that's that's right. We already stole like 30. Its amenities are almost zero. 25% uh, of the population is unemployed. Crime is rising. There's 
there's no houses for anyone. But unfortunately, they just have so many defensive armies that we're probably going to end up bombing this planet into dust, which is, you know, acceptable. All right, so we just got the psionics research, which means I should be able to come down here, yes, and grab psionics. So by adopting this, we're going to be able to give our people, there we go, a bunch of psionic powers. Modify pops by giving them the latent psionic, which gives some pretty nice bonuses. But as you could probably imagine, that's not all. We get psy corpse, basically just to mind read people to spy on them, as well as unlocking our full psionic potential, which will give us even more bonuses a little bit later down. And of course, at the very end, a very special project, which we're going to use to destroy the entire galaxy. All right, you know what? At this point, I think I am tired of just trying to raid this planet. Uh, we, we haven't really gotten any pops from it, so time for us to switch up our strategy. As a wise man once said, if we can't kidnap you, we're just gonna bomb you. Oh, and speaking of bombing, we have the last Ba'ul. So essentially, this is the last remaining creature of his entire race, one of the thousands year old precursor civilizations. A visitor? Can it be? This this was all my xenophobes needed to hear to just say, ah, that's, that's enough. We don't have time for this. Hold the plug. So it gives us a relic and unlocks decision. Life seating grants the ability to turn a non-Ecumenopolis into a Gaia world. Whoa, that's, that's really good. So I guess if we go over here to the party planet, now we can just turn it into a Gaia world over 720 days. That's actually really, really good. We can only use it once every, I think, 10 years, but it is a really strong ability. All right, well, on that wavelength, how's the planet? Oh, my. oh, Jesus, it's lost half its people. The army is down to 600. It's completely devastated. Great job, people. I didn't even need to tell them to do that. But we are going to go and test our orbital invasion force here, which is, which is, okay, this is, we are losing so many people. On the bright side, they are so ludicrously cheap, and we're invading them with their own people who have been brainwashed that it, it's working pretty well. Oh, that's right. So the Ba'ul life seeding that turns a world into a Gaia world actually creates new Ba'ul. And of course, you can imagine exactly what we're going to do with them. Okay, as if my prayers were answered from above, they're delicious. Well, shoot, that makes this decision super easy. Citizenship, schmittizenship. Livestock, you are. Okay, guys, you can stop bombing the capital. I, I wasn't even paying attention, and we bombed it into zero garrison and 11 pops. That means they lost 33 pops on this planet. Well, you know what that means. Off to the next one. Okay, I have 24 months, sadly. Uh, we reached 100% war exhaustion because bombing their planets extensively has kind of done that to us. But they are at negative 19. They are so close to capitulation that I can almost uh, conquer everything, I think. So I am going to desperately make a mad dash to try and invade the rest of everything they have. Okay, I think we're just barely going to be too late, unfortunately. I'm trying to invade one of their last planets over here, but we are just going to get forced into a peace deal. If I decline this first peace deal, I can kind of bug out the system, I think. I just need to somehow invade these two planets before they ask for peace again which I think is going to happen, unfortunately. I'm at minus four. It's so close. All, all they have to do is ask for peace and I'm totally screwed. I just need to... Oh! All right. Well, as bad as that might seem, um, yeah, this is a lot worse. You see, because we settled as a status quo, it essentially made a puppet state out of all their other stuff. And that puppet state is, of course, completely loyal to us. So we can go ahead and, well, it is our vassal. All right. Well, the unfortunate part about this whole vassal agreement is that because I can't modify it right now, if I go to negotiate, they're at negative 100 loyalty. They are going to hate us so much for the next seven years until I can renegotiate this. I, they don't even want us to be able to establish an embassy. You know, they're talking some mad sass for someone within indiscriminate bombing range. Okay, cool. So we got the alien box event, which gives us a red, green, and blue solution to apply all of our species with. Why exactly we've decided to just immediately blanket apply this random solution to people? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure the blue one is the best one. And if I check what exactly does it do? Okay, army damage plus 10% and leader lifespan. That's that's actually pretty decent. Oh, and our great leader also died. The Paragon that's been serving us for quite a while. So grand parade it is. Monthly unity, monthly ship build speed. Hey, his body was fired into the nearest star. Exactly what he would have wanted. Okay, so now that we've won the 
war up here, and we basically softened up the north a crap load, and we are bordered by the Synthoian Erasers, we've pretty much got to move on to our next goal, which is opening up the Shroud. The Shroud is basically this spectral plane of infinite power and all of that, and we get to reach into it and grab whatever we can. Sometimes it's a minor boost to our fleet power, and sometimes it will summon a giant monster that blows up the universe. And you can imagine which one we're gunning for. But there's a very specific strategy with the Shroud that essentially makes it so we are the last ones remaining in the- oh, oh my god, this, this map is hideous. But it will essentially make us the last people alive, and by default, we will win the game. Okay, so now we get to awaken the- basically all of our super psionic powers of absolutely everybody. So now all of our eligible leaders get psychic, which is going to make them quite a bit stronger, as well as giving all of our pops fully psychic abilities, so more unity, more happiness, and men just generally more research. I love how pretty much all of my minerals and food are just coming from eating other species. Yeah, so when I check my main planet, the lithoids are generating half of all of our minerals. Okay, so now we have enough unity to breach the shroud, which will give us a special project to explore it that I think takes a pretty, yeah, 77 months. But as soon as we get that done, we'll be able to reach out into the vast abyss of unknown and giant scary monsters to get those giant scary monsters. Right, so I finished the psionics branch and now we can go and get another ascension perk. Uh, but taking become the crisis, now we are trying to destroy the galaxy, but this is not necessary. As a matter of fact, it's actually bad to take this thing because we have an entirely different way which circumnavigates having everyone declare war on us. But in terms of ascension perks, we are gonna want Voidborn so we can start building habitats and advanced habitats because by the end of the game, we're only going to have a single system. So all of this expanding that we're doing is just a temporary measure. Okay, I, I was not paying attention. I kept digging even further and further and further on this planet over here. And eventually we hit the core where uh, there's now a giant monster eating our colony. It's 15,000 power. Well, it literally immediately seized control of my system over here, which is not so great. I only have a single pop on the planet and it's one robot working a robot building job. So there's really only one thing that I can do, and I'm gonna start bombing my own planet. Oh yeah, we're, we're really hitting that crystalline entity quite hard. It's, um, wow, it's taking no damage at all. Well, I'm hoping that I don't kill my only pop on here, because I literally just got one dude, and he's somehow surviving on the planet with a massive crystalline entity. All right, well, while we're bombing our own planet over there, we can finally reach into the shroud and see what we could find. As you can see, the shroud looks slightly not like the real world and by reaching into it now we will get a well I'm not even sure what this is oh right never mind so this is for a covenant which is exactly the thing we need so again we need to do another whole set of research essentially what we're trying to do is form a pack with one of these shroud entities that is less than friendly I mean all of them hate us but this one hates everyone and this is the other thing I was looking for a planetary shield generator so a planetary shield generator gives us minus 50% orbital bombardment damage, which is very, I mean, it's not normally that strong, but what makes it so incredibly strong is the fact that we are all cave dwellers. Because as you can see, we live under the surface of the planet, we take vastly less damage to orbital bombardments. On top of that, because our defensive armies are made up of fanatic guardians, they also take significantly less damage. I mean, I haven't even built any garrison buildings, and we have 3,000 worth of garrison on my main planet. So eventually the goal is to research enough technology and get enough armies for our final stage where instead of actually fighting people I'm going to sit on one planet and never die. Will it work? I genuinely don't know. Okay finally this is the other event I was hoping for a galactic crisis getting declared so essentially what's happening now is that we are going to ally with everybody in order to try and kill the Synthoian erasers spoiler I'm not gonna try and kill them because I don't care. So what that means is that they are now a level 5 crisis and I, I could just tag switch over there to show you what I mean. So for my last Dolores video this menu should be pretty familiar it essentially means they are also trying to wipe out all organic life the thing about being a level 5 crisis though okay and the game crashed that's that's what happens when I tag switch too much okay thank god I saved literally right before I did that so whenever a faction becomes a level 5 crisis it has a very specific interaction in the shroud okay guys I don't care about the galactic council everyone's gonna die by communing with the shroud over here so as soon as we finish this research project one of the covenants in the shroud is called the end of the cycle. Normally, when you reach into the shroud, you have a 2% chance to get the end of the cycle. However, that chance is multiplied by 5 if a 
faction is a level 5 crisis. Surprise, surprise, here's our level 5 crisis. To prepare for the end of the crisis thing, we don't really care about killing the Synthoian erasers. What we care a lot more about is just our technology. Because the technology is the only thing that will remain after we end the cycle. What exactly is ending the cycle, you'll see a bit later. Okay, well, you know, it is very possible that I made a slight mistake because the Synthoian erasers are now coming through all of our systems and blowing everything up. Yes, I, I think I could use a little bit of help from my so-called allies here. Now that I think about it, for as xenophobic as we are, almost half of our council is not democracy. Oh, that's just great. I was checking the traits of all of my council that I realized, uh, embezzler. This leader does not believe anyone would notice if small amounts of credits go missing, where small amounts is defined as like 50 per month. Man, I haven't even read this event and I just see because we're xenophobes, we could just say ethics. Okay, so finally the shroud is going to offer us a covenant, which will, so if we formed a covenant with this faction, the Whispers of the Void, it would basically make it so we can't form a covenant with anyone else. For that reason, we're obviously just going to say no. It also means that I can go over here into diplomacy, and so now we can start entering the Shroud uh, every so often. And in doing so, every time we enter it, we have a chance to end the cycle. Okay, so every five years, we get to reach into the Shroud, and because we have purchased a whole bunch of Zro, which is that resource right down there, we can reach out to a higher power, and then just choose pretty much any one of these, and it doesn't matter all that much. So again, I just want to exit the Shroud because Composer of Strands is not end of the cycle, and we basically just have to keep repeating that process until we get lucky. I'm also going to need to keep buying Zro for my uh, latent Zro addiction, so we have enough to keep reaching into the Shroud, uh, because by using Zro, it means we're guaranteed to get a Covenant as opposed to a different event. And getting a Covenant is the only way we can find the end of the cycle. Okay, another Shroud presence, and this one is the Eater of Worlds, and as scary as that sound, it's still not the scariest thing we're going to encounter. So, we don't care. We do need to hurry up, though, because the Synthoian Erasers are rapidly losing. I mean, actually, I'm, I'm not even 100% sure if they're losing. Their fleets are still bigger than almost anyone else's. Oh, aha! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! I've been grinding! Yes! Yes! The presence was waiting for us. It is the end of the cycle, and it has always been waiting for us. It is not yet your time, but it could be. Power, knowledge, and wealth beyond measure are ours for the taking, if we will only bring forth the end. Well, well, well. Don't mind if I do. 100% more resources from orbital stations, 100% more resources from jobs, 100% more naval capacity, 10 more star bases, and basically doubled influence. The only caption is, do not do this. <laughs> I had no idea it said that. Oh, of course, uh, we're gonna do it. We formed a covenant with the end of the cycle. As we took its bargain, a mere two words were spoken. Fifty years. Then silence as we were left to contemplate the future consequences of what we have just brought onto ourselves. May the spirits have mercy on us all. So if we look at our income in the top right after one month, uh, what's, what's about to happen? Oh, dear God. Holy crap, I have 404 naval capacity. I could kill anyone. And I will. All of our other resources are now ridiculous. Like, like, we're actually making money now. That's a surprise. So now we have 50 years to prepare for what is essentially the end of the entire universe. Well, except for us. So with our newfound resources, the main thing we want to do, as much as you'd think uh, conquering everybody around us would be smart, we only kind of want to do that. The main thing we need is research, because at the end of 50 years, we are going to lose everything that is not our research. Okay, the game crashed again. Excellent work. <laughs> What have I done? Okay, so basically, I've just been trying to research as much as I physically can at this point, because, uh, as I said before, research is the only thing we're gonna have left. All of our resources will be drained, well, sort of, there's there's kind of a way around that. But we'll get to that when we get to that, which will be in, uh, in how many years? Alright, we, we, we only have 34 years left. Oh, and just like that, the engine and the Synthoian erasers are now gone, so that means the whole endgame crisis thing is over. The purpose of keeping them alive or the purpose of not attacking them was just to make it more likely to get the event. So now that we have it, it doesn't really matter. So in the meantime, to prepare for our inevitable demise, I am just going to bribe everybody else around us. It's not entirely important at the current moment, but it will be very important later. So one of the things that we can do to prepare for the inevitable shroud is that our capital is going to get moved to a random spot in the entire galaxy. Now, the way that it works is that it has to be somewhere habitable. So what I'm doing is actually building a whole bunch of habitable habitats in some of my uninhabited systems. While I can't choose which system we spawn in, I can 
can heavily influence it just by throwing like 20 different habitats into these systems. I'm also super lucky that we have Arturian here as our leader. He is, he is absolutely tanking. All right, so we're halfway there. In 26 years, uh, the reckoning will happen. And we are a little bit behind schedule in terms of building habitats everywhere, but hopefully we'll be okay. Hopefully. Oh God, all right, we're having war preparation. So someone is planning to declare war. It looks like it's these people up here, which is kind of frightening given that, oh my God, they're, they're allied with everyone. All right, let me pull a gamer move and see if I can bribe them with something like, uh, I had 2,000 rare crystals. Is, is that enough? Nope, it stopped them. The war declaration is gone. Just about every single one of my planets at this point has been converted just to maximum research levels. Nothing is very important besides research because it's the only thing we keep. It's great watching my economy fall into tatters as I just prioritize every single planet to only do research and nothing else. My income is just tanked completely, but because I have so many livestock, uh, it really doesn't matter that much. Oh, hey, these guys are indentured servants. I don't even know where they came from. The other thing I'm doing is I'm buying gambling coins because I actually don't know if these carry over in between if we lose everything, meaning that we could just gamble all of our money away and then hopefully get it back. All right, so I've stacked a whole bunch of habitats over here, and I'm also building major orbitals on pretty much every single area I can. So each of these orbital platforms increase the effectiveness of our main orbital station in the center. By having a whole bunch of these centralized over here, we're going to be both away from the shroud when it spawns and have a really high chance of spawning over here because there's not many other inhabitable planets that haven't already been taken. Oh, uh, that's not good. So it looks like our vassal just exploded, uh, which is kind of bad because I, I don't want to be at war right now. Since we're going to lose all of our systems anyways, being at war doesn't help us a whole lot because everything's going to die. All right, at this point, we have five years until the cycle gets ended. I'm going to try to end this war before then. I should be able to. I do need my vassal to be somewhat alive. While normally we will lose all of our resources after the end of the cycle, there is kind of a way around that. And essentially what it involves is that if you offer a trade deal and then you have it be in monthly resources, a trade deal can never get canceled. So that means we essentially lock in a trade deal, have the end of the cycle come, but even though we lose all of our stuff, we keep our trade deals, meaning that people will continue to give us free stuff. All right, so now I'm just gonna give these guys one of my random systems in exchange for a couple monthly consumer goods so we'll give these guys one of my fleets for a whole bunch of minerals okay and here is another trade deal that i should be able to just throw in here so there's another 45 energy credits for the next 30 years you know it's especially interesting to me that i can ask the holy guardians for 200 monthly energy credits all in exchange for a bunch of crystals that are definitely comparatively cheaper all right so as you see the trade deal offers come in that is going to give us a consistent amount of income even when we lose all of our planets and we are in the final year only about 300 days left there's no point in me selling any of these resources either it, it really doesn't matter well Aturian, it's been nice knowing you but in about 100 days you you are not gonna be alive all right 20 days 19 18 and bo -bo boom oh yeah i also forgot to release our our vassal they they were obliterated too but anyway, we are still very much alive. Uh, basically, this summarizes up to we thought we'd be okay, and we definitely weren't. The only remaining group of people we have is all the ways up here in the top corner. So if I go to our capital, we are sitting here in exile now, but we have at least this system to our name. There's obviously not a lot here, but because of what we did, there we go, we get to grab the outpost of our thing again. So now we have a single province, and that's literally it. And all of our planets are completely gone, replaced with shroud manifestations and completely obliterated. The, I mean, we can find our capital somewhere over here. Yes, here it is, Democracy Dwelling, which is now a shrouded world and is completely uninhabitable. The entity over here is so absurdly powerful it is going to now attempt to obliterate all life in the galaxy. But the key is that it saves us for last. We've also lost almost all of our resources. I do need to buy some more rare crystals for that one trade thing. But as you can see, we are getting an unfair amount of energy credits just because the fallen empire decided to trade us a whole bunch over 30 years. My leaders are now completely dead. We only have a single leader left and she's just a random person from one of the random planets. So we obviously need to redo just about everything. And this is why I have kept Sovereign Guardianship.
Because we're now reduced to a single planet, the main problem with Sovereign Guardianship is that expanding is really hard. But obviously, because our Empire Sprawl is now practically zero, it doesn't matter. Research is also just about not doable. I mean, it doesn't even give... Like, if I try to research something, 1,703 months for research. I mean, it doesn't help that we don't have any researchers anywhere. Oh, also, if you thought us losing our entire Empire was bad, there's a lot worse. Every single faction now has a minus 1,000 modifier on our opinion brought the end but no matter how much these people hate us they can't cancel their trade agreements so they are going to unwillingly give me money for the next 30 years we have shortages of almost all of our resources although i think that's just a carryover so we should be okay and right now we are um we're facing some problems but the problem we're facing is not even close to the problem that the rest of the world is about to be facing because this absorbed democracy is basically going to rampage through and try and eat all the planets. That's what we're facing down. It has an ungodly amount of HP and it's moving. Sure, it does not move very fast, but it really doesn't need to. Okay, I think I see what it's doing now. It's basically going to eat every single planet, even if they are or aren't particularly worth eating. So it seems to be going very slowly. Oh, yeah, I think that, yep, there goes that habitat. Oh my god, it actually works. Yes, I still have 41,000 caravan coins. Man, I should have bought more. And just like that, we're winning a thousand minerals from it i mean it's not it's not very profitable but it's also completely free ah yes the safest investment gambling chips no giant astro dimensional being can take away my gambling addiction the best part of this is that i'm in breach of galactic law very clearly but because they haven't passed any acts to have any sanctions for if someone actually breaks the law it literally doesn't matter i love democracy oh good we've been here for less than a year and my leader's already a substance of user. In fairness, this is uh, definitely a pretty stressful situation. So I decided to go into observing mode to see what the, uh, the, the, the reckoning was doing. And yeah, that's a primitive plan. Oh, oh, it's just gone. So if I try and zoom in on it now, yeah, the entire thing just gets consumed along with all the pops on it. And you know, it's, it's going to keep moving. Up. Oh, oh yeah. It's using the hyper relay system that I built. The thing is this giant ball of clouds actually scales on the number of pops it eats. So as soon as it starts, to target some of the more populous planets of anyone we're fighting, or really just anyone, such as this star system over here. Well, I think it will just walk over here and okay, it one shot the star base and then ate that. So it inevitably starts to scale its stats, I think up to something like plus 500% of everything. So it's kind of scary. So remember how all that time ago I took nihilistic acquisition in order to give us rating? Well, the reason I took that was also partly for now. We've gathered just enough unity and despite the fact that I have no fleet because I have the head of Zarlequin I could just materialize one out of thin air and of course it is none other than this 66,000 fleet power fallen empire all right so now we can just go ahead and declare a random war with one of our neighbors and as soon as I do that I could just jump jet them immediately across the map into their city destroy their base over here and then we're just gonna start raiding all their pops now we are facing some issues like uh like my money is almost gone okay and just like that two thousand dollars for selling these robots get me back on the market at this point i'm just gonna start putting everybody onto the market because jobs are not really a problem where our influx of of uh, random people we're taking from everywhere is is pretty high on the bright side because my ships are basically fallen empire ships they are very good against the creatures of the shroud so you can see here the heated battle where they they just instantaneously die now these are like the smaller versions so they are much, much weaker than the massive big daddy clops, which actually, now that I think about it, where, where is it? So I was playing for a bunch of years, and then I realized that the Reckoning stopped destroying planets, and I was wondering what happened to it. So I went into observer mode, rewinded time, and spectated it until it ran into a starbase and died. I'm kind of in awe. I somewhat expected this thing to be able to, to actually deal with, you know, literally something. From what I could find, it doesn't have any health regeneration. So these level one star bases here uh, will slowly kill it over the course of the entire galaxy. That's not the ending I was expecting. And it is not the ending I will do. If the Reckoning isn't going to destroy the entire world, well, I'll do it myself.
Now, as much as it might seem like it's impossible to destroy the entire world, uh, luckily, I do have one ace up my sleeve. You guessed it, gambling. Because I stored a somewhat ungodly amount of energy credits in caravan coins, I am now able to pretty much open as many reliquaries as I would like. Look, take 2,000 physics research, not actually that helpful. But I could also just keep playing the slots basically forever. And hey, I, I needed those 1,000 minerals. I like how the way I'm increasing my menace level is literally just by being in breach of galactic law. I have done nothing else to increase my menace, but evade taxes, essentially. Okay, so we just completed the very first become the crisis thing, and we kind of just want to wait now on the second. The reason for this is that everyone is vastly stronger than we are. I mean, as much as we do have a bunch of democratic zealot spiritualists fighting for us from a fallen empire, we will not win a war against the entire galaxy. Okay, well, I did just lose my entire fleet over here here, but luckily I could just walk back to the head of Zarlaquin and look at that, a new one. Now I could just throw another 60k fleet power pretty much anywhere. Oh, uh, wait, someone else is trying to wipe out all of human existence? Well, don't mind if I do. I guess they're over here, but I mean, I'm pretty sure they're gonna get stopped. And, and everybody closes borders with me as their first action. Okay, wow, and the people who tried to destroy the world, their engine just got destroyed. So that means that we have had the Exterminators attempt to destroy the world, fail. These guys attempt to do it, fail. And um, and now there's us, who have been relinquished to one planet where I am slowly rebuilding by just building habitats everywhere I physically can. Okay, now we're fighting the Unbidden as well. The Unbidden is one of the endgame crises. And when I say crisis, I, I mean crisis. So in terms of destroying the entire world, um, we've got a lot of competition. Right, so the Unbidden are, uh, well, 30, 30,000. Oh, that's 300,000. The Unbidden are going to pretty much pummel their way through the entire right side of the galaxy. Hopefully that doesn't include me. So I am starting to realize though that the victory year is in 2500. And at this point, I'm wondering whether it's even possible to destroy the galaxy or just survive. Oh my God, we just got one of the perfect paragons. Every time she wins a fight on the ground, 30% of the pops get sent back to our main cities. So the first wave of the Unbidden has all also kind of exploded over here, but I believe there will be a few more after it. In the meantime, we really just need to speed through our crisis tree in order to hopefully try and build the engine while everyone else is distracted, because I don't think I could fight everyone. Now, over the past several years, I have done nothing but bomb my neighbors in order to restore my population up to 344 people, only 40 of which are actually citizens. It also helps immensely that I can go ahead and invade the planet and I got a legendary admiral who steals 30% of the pops from any planet we conquer. So as you can see this one has 32 and as soon as we take the planet he will immediately just yoink a third of the population all the ways into my capital which has 164 people. All right after several years we have finally gotten to our level 5 crisis and so at this point uh oh wait no everyone's not gonna declare war on me yet because my menace isn't high enough. I've built a strategic coordination center to boost all of our ships. I have turned most of my planets into somewhat fortress worlds, just lots and lots of garrisons. And I have done everything I can to just max out my star bases with only defensive structures. Okay, just a couple more days of tax evasion and 10,000 metas. Community declares us galactic crisis. So now we are at war with literally everyone. And my atherospheric engine is now up and running. Uh, we also have star eaters to start blowing up worlds. And so we need more dark matter in order to complete this thing. Um, things are gonna get kind of spicy. I have stacked as many defensive platforms as I pretty much can on my home system. And I can probably summon a couple more armies. So if I use my head of Zarlaquin, that gives us one more army. Me, and then if I go into my astral actions, I can summon a dimensional fleet. There's our fleet. This is pretty much everything we're going to have access to. And hopefully we are able to just hold off for... There's going to be a lot of fleets coming. All right, so they're attacking our capital world over here. But I think I have just enough star base stuff. And also I think a couple of reinforcements coming in that we might actually win this. Or at least this first fight. Yes, okay. We're... I, I don't know how we're doing this. You know, I was hoping what was over here was a 
a significant portion of their armies? Clearly not. On top of the other 33,000 over here. Fuck's sake, what is the AI doing? Well, I will be honest, I wasn't expecting my capital to fall while I wasn't looking to 200 and well, that's a, that's a lot more than 280k. They're trying to bomb my capital right now, but I could just start recruiting clone armies as much as I can, and with my 6.5k garrison, on top of that, because my empire is subterranean, we take 75% less damage from orbital bombardment, on top of the, I think, already shield generator that gives another 50%, and then some of my traditions over here, which should give even more resistance to orbital bombardments. Although, uh, as much as my military is quite strong, my fleets have not quite caught up on that front. We, we do have some pretty nice ones, but there is, there is a lot of pretty colors. Well, just as I thought we might actually have a chance in this fight, they are now rapidly deploying a lot of fleets into here, and okay, that's, that's not important. Ambassador? Why do we still have those? Well, there goes just about my entire fleet. I, okay, and, and we weren't even close. And here goes my star base almost instantly. That's, that's a lot of defensive platforms down the drain. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Things are not looking great. I don't think I have a single ship anymore, uh, and all of my planets are being bombed into submission. Let's, let's see. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair fleet over there. Here's another system, which is just totally evaporating. As a matter of fact, each and every one of my planets, except for this one in the far right quarter, are being bombed by at least 100,000 fleet power. My new goal is not actually the destruction of the universe. It's just to survive until the end game year, which is 2,500. So if we could survive for 15 years, I call that a win. I have done nothing but stack armies on my planets. I only, I've already got 800 assault clones just waiting for an invasion. And on this planet, I've just got 12,000 in garrison. And we are still having democratic elections where T-Trad has somehow led this empire for the past 142 What? This man is old. Okay, wait, you know what I just realized, which is completely broken? I still have a star eater and I have been blowing up planets nonstop and guess what I could do, even if I don't control the system? Build the device that destroys everything. That doesn't make any sense once- Look at that, it's it's somehow building. Also, there's not a very big fleet here, so I think I could just go in and use my head of Zarlaquin, and there we go, they'll just wipe the system real fast. Ah, okay, look at that, we somehow got control of our capital back. I, uh, I don't think it's gonna last. <laughs> This is the system they're bombing? It doesn't even show all the fleets. It goes off my screen. So, um... I heard there's a city under these ships. Oh no, wait, they're not even bombing the planets anymore. They're just destroying them with colossi. Oh wait, never mind. I take it back. That was someone else. Whew. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like this even more. This is insane. Okay, now it is actually off the screen. There is, I, I, I can't even move to show all the fleet. Wait, no, I can't. I can, I can go like this. Oh wait, I see what happened. Everyone is fighting the fallen empire. So the Awakened Empire is actually conquered through everything down here. And, oh, I, okay, and I just completed the first step of the, of the engine. My goal right now is just to survive until the end of the game. And all I'm doing is mashing armies onto all of my places. Okay, see, and as soon as they stop bombing for just one second, it'll just immediately replenish all of my defensive armies. Also, I, I, I'm i running out of people to get bombed here. wonder what happens if I summon this uh, spectral fleet over here. It's a... It's a 25,000 fleet power. Jesus Christ. This thing could actually just roll through and alleviate a lot of the pressure on our planets, which is kind of funny because it's it's going to get blown up almost immediately. Oh, oh, yeah, here they come. Here they are. They're, yeah, fun has been detected. So I couldn't help but notice uh, that there is a Colossus in my system. It's actually sitting directly over my, uh, my, my star base, but it's not doing anything because I'm not at war with them. I don't know why, but apparently the Fallen Empire Empire has not actually declared war on me, but they're just waiting? And I only have five years left until we survive. I, I mean, survive. Quotations. My capital is down to 21 pops from like 150. I don't know how many I started with, but Delta, I'll let you do some editing magic to show how many I had at the start of this war. <laughs> 
And only now, after 15 years of bombing, has one of my planets reached more than 50% devastation. Way to go, little guy. You, um, I, I don't even know really where you are. Oh, there, there you are. The ships are phasing inside. Yeah, no wonder it's 50% devastation. I don't want to speak too soon, but we are about T minus one year from the game ending. And after 20 years of bombing, they couldn't crack a single one of my developed colonies. You know, I don't actually remember if I left it on the default settings such that it'll end at 2,500. And dear God, I hope that it does because I don't, I haven't lost anyone. I'm actually gaining pops because I'm building robots to replace all the dead people from the orbital bombardment. Wait, how did my devastation go down? This one's been getting bombed for the entire game and it has 5% devastation. 13,000 defensive armies and 7,000 assault armies. Almost all of my energy credit income is just armies. And there we are. We're on the last month on the very last year. And our, our planet has been, I mean, I would say reduced to rubble, but we actually have every building and boom, 2,500. I, I don't know how we did it. The game is a little bugged right now. It's not going to show the end screen because um, the unbidden are a little glitched. It says there's still some dimensional anchors uh, alive when I actually blew them up into a black hole. Don't know what happened there, but we have done it. And, and by it, I mean, we, um... We destroyed our own empire, got ourselves bombed into ash, and I'm pretty sure that Supreme Leader Tetron here, who has, I think, been in charge since the very moment we got exiled, is is not happy. The current state of events could but definitely be a little better than what it is right now. Certainly not ideal. This video did not go as I intended it. I, I really thought that the end of the reckoning was going to kill everything, but, you know, I consider this a win. This video, despite crashing like seven times, was extremely fun to record. If you'd like to see more, you could do the whole like and subscribe boogaloo thanks for watching see ya